Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or simply hoping to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about psychological testing and assessment through the use of computers. And we, we, we are breaking this one up into two parts. Right. One, uh, the one for today, we're going to talk about sort of um, real, uh, and I hate to use the word real, um, but, but authentic, standardized, norm, uh, normative tests used um, on the computer for psychological testing. And tomorrow we're going to talk um, more about sort of, you know, the, the Facebook um, uh, pie posts that you get that say, um, you know, what's your IQ? And, you know, you answer a what's few questions. What's your personality? Yeah. <laughs> which, uh, which Game of Thrones house would you right. belong to? Um, you know, those kinds of personality tests. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll talk about those tomorrow. Right. But, um, but today we're going to talk about, uh, again, sort of standardized... Um, or normalized um, psychological tests and assessments used uh, on the computer. How technology has changed how we how we conduct assessments right. today. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And yesterday we mentioned that uh, that really nice quote from the neurologist friend of ours who said that you know right. many of today's neurologists couldn't tell couldn't identify a a seizure if it was happening in front of them, and and I dare say that a lot of psychologists couldn't identify some psychological issues if they were happening right in front of them because we've we've come to rely so heavily on computers and computer-based assessments um but not just computer-based assessments just testing in general yeah but be a little bit blasphemous here Mm -hmm. um we, we have to remember that when a test is administered it produces a score Mm -hmm. okay but the score doesn't speak to us right or shouldn't speak to us right what should talk to us is the functional ability of the person who's taking the test mm-hmm. my observations during the assessment are much more important mm-hmm. than the score right okay but you have to know what you're looking for right um, as a friend of mine once said uh, they were doing a tour he lived in germany he was a, he was german uh, high school student mm-hmm. and he said when they were touring italy uh, their teacher said, "You cannot see what you do not know." Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and you would they right. if, if you didn't know certain things, you'd walk by a building right. that really has some s- historical significance, um, but you wouldn't know to stop unless you knew what it was. Right. And it's the same in our field. Right. The the scores these tests don't speak to us. Mm-hmm. They provide a piece of data that mm-hmm. then we have to use to make some clinical judgment. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's it's um, it, so we'll start there. Well, it, it's the difference that's... between testing and assessment. Right. Testing is producing a score. Right. Assessment is making a clinical judgment. Right. And so we don't want to confuse the two. Sometimes we use the two interchangeably. They're really not synonymous. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it just as a basic example, right. you know, people will people put a lot of emphasis and a lot of uh, place a lot of focus on, on, on an IQ, IQ score. That, I think that's the best example. All right. So mm-hmm. if a person has a, l- l- let's say a 74 IQ. Right. Okay. Hmm. You would say that person scores in the borderline range. Mm-hmm. Um, you would expect them to have difficulty in school. You would expect right. them to, a lot of these things. And, and if you just look at the score, that's going to lead you to make some pretty profound, pretty significant right decisions mm-hmm. and um, set a certain level of expectation for mm-hmm. that person. Right. Meanwhile, we have certainly evaluated people with 74 IQs who are making straight A's in school, mm-hmm. who are um, actually doing doing very, very well mm-hmm. um, in every area of their life. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, so this sco- their test score is based upon a... a a very specific limitation that they may have. Right. But if you didn't do the assessment piece that you're talking about and you only mm-hmm. did the testing and looked at that specific score, 
your your evaluation would be miles apart from right. the, it, with those two perspectives. And conversely, we had, when I was in um, Texas, um, we would get these kids from West Texas, where you mm -hmm. had you know ten kids in a high school, but there were many first generation immigrants, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't do well in school. But then we would bring them in for an assessment, mm -hmm. and they'd have an IQ that we would say would be in the gifted range, be mm -hmm. over 130. And mm -hmm. suddenly you realize that, wow, this boy or girl, the student has far more potential than their educational background mm -hmm. would suggest. Right. And so the problem is they're undereducated. Right. It's not that they can't. It's that they haven't had enough experience. They haven't right. had enough education. But they're certainly capable. Right. And then we would admit them to the university, and they would do well. Mm -hmm. when, once they were given the opportunity, mm -hmm. they certainly had the ability. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but if you just judge it based on their educational level or their ability to use English, right. yeah, they don't. They look in. They look as though they're not competent. In fact, they're, they're, very, they're quite competent. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so there, there is this big difference between testing and assessment. Assessment. Right. And, and so we have to be, you know, we're starting with that because that, that's sort of the basis of everything else that we're going to talk about right. here. Because if you, if, if, if a psychologist, um, you, you said we're going to be a little blasphemous here. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if you're, a psychologist or you're, you see a psychologist that you know administers tons of tests and you they get all these scores and then they just kind of talk about the scores you know th there is some concern with that because computer based what computer based testing has done mm -hmm. is it's made it very easy and convenient and fast to get lots of data That's lots right. of numbers mm -hmm. and and so as a psychologist you can administer a ton of tests in in a fraction of the time that it used to take, right. um, and but it, it really depends on what you then do with that information, That's what right. you then do with that data. That's right. These are simply data sets, you know. Um, well, oh, the MMPI is an ex is a perfect example to me, right? Because the MMPI is you know three hundred plus items. They're all true false, right. and back in back in the day, <laughs> people had to do it paper and pencil. That's and right. so you would have this massive Scantron right. and yeah. a book with, you know, all these items in it. And mm -hmm. it, it was, it was neatly constructed. I thought it was very neat the way right. that it was constructed, but you would answer the, the patient would answer all these questions. But then as the, as the psychologist, we would have these like, um, like overhead projector films right. and you would have Temple, to put it on yeah. top of it and it would, you, you would have to match up the circles and mm -hmm. to see how many um, right. items they that scored in this mm -hmm. particular? But there would be like fifty of them. It was not neatly constructed. It was cleverly constructed. It was cleverly constructed. But it wasn't neat at all. Right. It was messy because you had all these templates, opaque templates that you could mm -hmm. see through, and you had to line everything up and make sure you were on the right page. Right. You know, otherwise you were going to get them all wrong. You know? Yeah. So it was it was quite a complex undertaking you had to be take very hours. very careful right. right it would take it would take an hour or more to right. score everything right mm -hmm. well now you can administer the mmpi on the computer and the patient right. takes it and they're done in about 30 or 45 minutes right and you literally click like three buttons you and then you it. get all their scores right so it makes it very very convenient to get all this data right. i mean pages of data mm -hmm. but you know the concern is then what happens next. That's right. Because the more you can, that that allows you to give lots and lots of tests. Right. Um, but you know, my concern, our concern is, mm -hmm. then what? What what happens next? What are you going to do with all that information? That's right. That's right. Yeah. And that's what. Mm, yeah. I could go on and on about that. I know. I know. But and you have to, you know, when we are trained as psychologists, you're first of all trained to administer tests carefully. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's rules you have to follow. And then you produce scores, and your first level of training is what do these scores mean? Right. You know that this is an average score, this is below average, right. this is above average, and so you learn to interpret at a very rudimentary level. Right. However, you're obligated through training and education, and this is why we have to do additional training mm -hmm. every two years. So we have to document that we've done. You're, you're, it, it is expected that you will continue to refine your skills right. and become more of a clinician and not just a generator of test data. Right. 
Not everybody does that. Right. And many people will continue to administer tests and just look at the scores, mm -hmm. rather, and, which is, that's called testing, mm -hmm. because the emphasis is on the test and what the test is right. doing, rather than on assessment, which is looking at the person. Mm -hmm. uh, the clinician looks at the person and does a clinical assessment right. using the test data, but making a clinical judgment. Right. You know, we've had to testify in, in court before about, and I, I know I have, and I, and I think that you and I have talked about times when you've had to, where we've had to testify because our assessment mm -hmm. was inconsistent with the testing. Our, our overall assessment of oh, the person... Oh, our clinical judgment was different than what the test score said. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, then you have to pull out all these old uh, textbooks that say, right. hey, you know, remember, our, our standards say mm -hmm. that, you know, dis decisions should never be based upon a single test score or... Right you know, based solely upon testing mm -hmm. and whatnot. But, you know, the, the, again, just the issue is, is that we continue to be in this, uh, you know, the more that we have computer-based mm -hmm. testing that makes the testing easier, right. we're going to be at risk of just sort of falling into this pattern of just, right. hey, you know, let's just administer a whole bunch of stuff and see what we get and then kind of go from there. Right. And, and that's a... That's a slippery slope. That's a, yes. Yeah. yeah, we have to be careful. What I like about the test, and there's a there's a famous IQ test now mm -hmm. that we do on iPads, mm -hmm. um, but essentially do it on a computer. What's wonderful about it is that your scores tend to be much more accurate. Right. Because when you're administering paper and pencil tasks, you have your you're observing the person, you're writing down responses, and you're keeping track of the time, and right. that can be tricky. Mm -hmm. um, with the computer-based versions of these tests, you don't have to worry about time. It right. does it automatically. Right. Okay. It, it's doing it while you're doing other things. Right. And so I love those features of well, the computer-based tests. Not just that, but with thinking about that same test, um, whenever there's a verbal response yeah. from the participant, the iPad automatically records the audio. Right. So you don't have to, you know, I remember... You know, you would write, write you would, it down. you know, put, get cramps in your arm from trying to write mm -hmm. down everything that the person said because you know you're supposed to take mm -hmm. those kinds of detailed notes. Well, um, that and that was really difficult, but now it just That's records right. the whole thing, and so you can go back later and you can listen to it again. You can slow it down mm -hmm. and and make sure yeah. that you get all the pieces to so you can be much more accurate in your scoring. That's right, because you're trying to remember what the person said, mm -hmm. and if you if if you don't get to the report for two or three days later, then of course you mm -hmm. have lots of interference and right. you've forgotten everything that the person said. Right. Um, so, in that regard, technology has offers huge advantages mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. assessment process, to the accuracy of right. the data that you're producing. Right. But again, it's still the clinician's obligation, the, the professional's obligation to, you, to right. take those data and not rely completely on the numbers, right. but to go beyond the numbers and make some clinical judgment. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you know, we, we used the example a moment ago of uh, the NMPI, I mentioned that. Right. And, and you know, generally speaking, the MMPI is a test that you don't have to sit there and watch. Right. Um, you know, they're just answering true false questions. There's no real skill based right. assessment that you're There's doing there. Really and so those kinds of tests are really easy and it is very convenient mm -hmm. to put a person on a computer and they can take that test. Right. Um, but this is where some other limitations come up because mm -hmm. what, you know, if you're, and this was, this is true with the paper pencil as well, because mm -hmm. even if it was paper pencil, they would be set off in a room mm -hmm. to take it. But, you know, there's an item on the MMPI <laughs> 2, for example, that, that refers to the, uses the word brood. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there is a pretty large percentage of people that I've, that I've tested with the right. MMPI that have no idea no what that idea word means. means. Right. And, and so, so the concern sometimes with those kinds of tests is what happens if the person <clears throat> doesn't understand? What happens if they're reading, they, their reading ability is, is lower than you would anticipate, <coughs> right. or if they are, if, if there's words that are used that they just don't understand. Right. And that happens all the time. It does. I mean, uh, there are people, you'll be giving these tests, and um, I was giving one the other day, and the child began to get very frustrated. Mm -hmm. Well, had I not been in the room, right. I, I would not have known mm -hmm. that he just became frustrated and was just guessing. 
right. he wasn't he wasn't actually thinking through it. He, he was just, just hitting, tapping buttons. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, got to remember that. Right. right. Or the person who doesn't have the vocabulary. I tested right. a boy the other day, and he said, well, this could be this or this. Mm -hmm. I said, which one do you think they want me to do? And sometimes you have to guide the person through it to get mm -hmm. accurate results. Right. So. Yeah. So there, there's some limitations. Responsibility is within. on the professional. Absolutely. Absolutely. But but it is nice. It is convenient. And, and wonderful. And we include I some computer-based tests. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But it, but the the assessment piece that comes after the testing is what's really important. That's what we emphasize. There's a new achievement test out, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's tricky to score by hand. Mm -hmm. But I've been scoring it by hand just so I gain familiarity with it. Mm -hmm. But I can't wait until I start doing it. Yeah. Uh, start plugging the data into their computer algorithms because then it will produce accurate scores quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think from now on, I've done a number of them by hand and now I'm ready to, to let the computer do it. Yeah. It's a mm -hmm. little bit easier. Just put it in a number and let, let it worry about it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, um, so, so computer-based psychological testing is great. Like it. Yep. Um, there are some limitations to it. Mm -hmm. um, but tomorrow we're going to talk about sort of some of the um, <laughs> pop culture types yes. of testing. I can't wait till tomorrow. And so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. So. All, right. All right. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Thanks for sharing this episode of the Mental Breakdown and Psych podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you will find all of our previous podcasts and much more. We would be honored if you would become a patron through patreon.com where any donation you can manage will go to the development and creation of more content. Just visit patreon.com slash the mental breakdown for more information. Thanks again for listening. Have an awesome day and we look forward to being back in your feed tomorrow morning.